the primary mission of the National Weather Service is, is issuing uh, warnings of all types to people across the United States, including people here in North Carolina from the uh, National Weather Service offices serving North Carolina. Uh, it's, it's our main mission to protect life and property. And one way we do that is by looking at severe thunderstorms or potential severe thunderstorms using the National Weather Service Doppler radar. On this image here, we see an image which, call, which is simply called reflectivity. What that means is the radar hits rain droplets and the energy from those rain droplets comes back toward the radar and shows up on our radar screen in these very colors here. The blues represent very light rainfall and the hotter the colors, and the yellows, the oranges, and particularly the reds, those colors represent very heavy rainfall. This bright red moving from the south toward the north over North Carolina represents a very strong cell of rain, in this case a thunderstorm that was moving uh, from the south toward the north and in this case on November 16th of 2006. The Doppler radar also allows us to sample wind direction and speed in the atmosphere. The old radars back in the 70s and the 80s, some of those 1957 version radars, uh, would only show the rainfall uh, reflectivity and not in the colors that you see there. They were only basically, you could consider them like black and white images. The new Doppler radar is able to allow us to sense wind speed and direction in the atmosphere. And the greens represent winds blowing to the radar, the reds represent winds blowing away from the radar. The fascinating thing about the wind direction and speed indications from the radar is that we can sample circulation in storms, circulations that might indicate a tornado before one's even spotted. And in this case right here, as we zoom in to this storm, the one that we showed on the previous image with the real dark red colors, we see greens blowing into the radar, which is up to the upper left. The radar in this case is in the upper left part of the screen. We see greens blowing into the radar and reds coming away. And if I zoom in a little bit more, the brighter the colors, the faster the wind. And we see a bright green right next to a very bright red. Winds blowing in and blowing out. And you can notice by the way I'm moving my cursor in a circular fashion. That allows National Weather Service meteorologists, uh, if we see those types of signatures, to issue tornado warnings even before they're spotted by a skywarn spotter, law enforcement, fire personnel, or others out there in the general public. It's this tool that you know, allows us to get warnings out pretty quickly. And I want to show an example of how we would issue a warning in the case of the uh, tornado that affected uh, the Regalwood area and then storms that moved north, north from there across to the coastal plain of North Carolina on uh, early November 16th. If we can move over here to the left screen, we see the storm that produced that, that tornado that unfortunately killed several people there in the Regalwood area. We see the storm moving to the north ahead of a line of thunderstorms that was coming in from the west. Looking at the velocity images associated with that, and we can try to step through them. We see here the very bright greens next to the very bright reds showing real strong circulation associated with that storm. And as it moved toward the north, it continued to maintain that real strong circulation. And although a tornado wasn't observed along its whole path length, we had to continue to issue tornado warnings because of the real strong signatures that we saw on the radar. Let's take a look at how we would issue a warning. And back a long time ago, when I first started in the Weather Service back in the early 90s, what we would do is have to basically type everything in, almost like a typewriter, and it would take a very long time to get a warning out. Well, let's say, for example, I noted that this storm here was a severe storm. I would call up, up here on the upper right, this software called WarnGen. 
and clicking on that button activates some software that allows us to take a button here in the middle of the screen and drag that right to the storm. Then the software shows us some counties that we can issue warnings for. The storm motion arrow is pretty good in this case, showing that the storm is moving from the south-southwest to the north-northeast. And then using the software on the left, there's a number of different types of warnings that I can issue. We see a severe thunderstorm warning at the top, a tornado warning following that, severe weather statements that give people information to follow up those warnings. Normally for severe thunderstorm warnings or tornado warnings, we issue them for an average of 30 minutes to an hour. In this case, I'll select 60 minutes. And then below that, there's a number of, of things that we can put into the warnings to give people an idea of how we got the information that the storm was severe and what the primary threat is associated with that storm. In this case, since we know that there's a history of tornadic activity from the storm moving from Regal Wood to the north, what we'll do is we'll select a tornado warning. Doppler radar indicated a tornado. We'll make sure that some locations that are impacted are going to be in this text of the warning itself. And then we'll have a number of call to action statements that we put in the warnings. Call to action statements basically refer to actions that people should take in the event of hazardous weather ranging from going to the safest place on the lowest floor in a building, staying away from windows and putting as many walls between you and the outside as possible, to getting away, uh, getting out of a mobile home or getting away from a vehicle. We'll leave the first icon up and then we'll click on this create text. What comes up on the screen is an indication of what we call the National Weather Service, our product, but what we see here is the text of the warning. And what will come out and be sent to law enforcement officials, TV stations, state emergency services officials, even your county emergency services officials will be this warning. A tornado warning issued for these particular counties, in this case in Central North Carolina, until this time. And below that we see the text of the warning. At 7.45 a.m. National Weather Service Doppler radar indicated a tornado seven miles east of Mount Olive, moving north at a very fast speed here, 65 miles per hour. What we would do at this point is if we think the warning is okay, we click on the send button and away it would go to, again, law enforcement officials, emergency services, uh, the media, and that would be displayed on TV through those icons, maybe broadcast on television and broadcast on radio stations. What happens also with these warnings is that they get broadcast immediately over NOAA weather radio the voice of the National Weather Service, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, weather information, high and low temperatures, hourly temperatures, uh, warnings are broadcast on, on that system. And it immediately goes out for broadcast. It used to be done by human voices. Now it's done by a computer voice, but we've improved that computer voice over the years. What that allows us to do is, with a click of a button, get things out on that weather radio fast to you instead of having to record it and then putting it on, which takes even more time.